I'm not okay. It is time. Hello, my name is Nikki and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I have been doing a Throne of Glass read along. This is a first time read for me. I'm really excited. Also really nervous. I've put it off for around a year already just because I don't know. It's like I hate reading final books and series. Let me know if I'm the only one, but I just like don't want the world to be over and I get really sad that I'm going to miss my favorite characters. But you know, with recent developments, I might not be the last time I see some of these characters so we'll see. I finally started it. I like really did not know how to start this like momentous vlog of like an a thousand page book since you know like it is an a thousand page book and it is like a huge ass series like even like I was showing my boyfriend I was showing him like the back of it and I was like I read all these other books plus three more that aren't pictured here and he was like wow that's a lot of books <laughs> like it just feels like a culmination of a lot of things but I feel like it's also a good way to for me to like get my gear going. I haven't really been in a reading mood. I've been really like and also last week I was sick as a dog. So this week I'm gonna start it off strong with my annotating with my Kingdom of Ash and I can give you my first initial thoughts. I totally forgot what a shit show they left us in in the last book, um, Empire of Storms, and like what a mess they have created and how they're gonna get out of it. I don't know. Really nervous for everyone. Honestly, I really feel for Adian. Like, what do you think? It, like, I feel like Adian, if you know who he is, like he's a controversial figure, but I really feel for him. And then I also really feel for everyone involved, Lysandra, Aelin, Rowan. I feel for all of them, okay? <laughs> I'm so stressed. Starting it at the beach was like a super vibe. It was like calm, even though like the book was not calming me down. And it just made me feel like so happy to get back into this world. And it's just so action packed. I think that's like the very big difference I find between this series and like her other series. By her, I mean Sarah J Maas' other series. That this one's like so much more of a fantasy. Like this is fantasy with romance rather than a romance with fantasy, if that makes sense. I think it does. But anyways, see you later. Okay, so I'm 50 pages in and I feel like it was a good place to do a little update. Forewarning, there are gonna be spoilers for like all of Sarah J Maas's like MCU basically. Like the, the, the Massiverse, I guess. Like I don't know if that's the name, but I was really surprised that we're getting Aelin's POV because I thought it would just be kind of maybe like flashes, but we're kind of getting her moments of lucidity. And now I'm understanding why people love Fenris and Aelin so much, like in the sense of like them together. I don't think they ship them because obviously like she has her person, their companionship and how they like go through the struggle together. Like honestly, I feel so bad for Aelin, but like also I feel bad for everyone. <laughs> Like everyone's going through it right now. I just finished the chapter with Dorian and Dorian's like not okay at all. I found so many Easter eggs. Like if you are, I'm actually marking them, but if you know, you know. And this was in Adia's chapter where they go, he says, if beings from another world could be considered gods at all, when talking about the gods from their world, and then when Gavin is explaining like his god, the all-seeing one, Dorian is asking him, what is he? And he says, can there not be many gods from many places, some born of this world and some born elsewhere? Very suspicious, if you ask me. Very suspicious. Every time we go back into like an Elid, like the people hunting Aelin, I get really sad because like Rowan's like 100% going through it. So anyways, I'm gonna end the night with this and see you tomorrow with more thoughts. Okay, so I've just continued reading. I feel like I look like I'm in some sort of police interrogative. It is 12, 11.59, now it's 12. And I have read since my last update at page 50. I am now on page 256, the beginning of chapter 30. And oh my god. Oh my god, they finally got her and I'm so, so, I was literally dying and like I'm whispering, I don't really know why, I guess it's like to counteract the amount of stress I had in this scene, but oh my god, I like can't even tell you like who I love the most, oh my god. This is why I hadn't picked up this book yet because I knew this is gonna happen, like I know I'm not sleeping today, like that is a fact because I'm gonna continue reading, even though I'm exhausted. Okay, 
back to reading. I'll have you know, I'm like literally sweating right now, like because I was so worked up. Oh my God, this book. Like, and everything's tying together. Characters that I'd forgotten about, they're back and they're like, like so many things are tying together. And then so many things about like the whole like SJM universe are tying together. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God. So let me get my makeup on while I talk to you about how it's gone. Oh my God, I read so much yesterday. Like I'm at page 542, so I'm officially more than halfway through the book. I have marked up so much and I guess I could talk about how I'm marking things up. I didn't have like my thing doesn't have that many sticky um colors so what i did was i basically broke it down in like themes rather than like usually i do like love or whatever but there's so many characters that it was gonna be like a moot point almost so what i ended up doing was breaking it down by color so the pink is manon and dorian the orange is adian and lysandra the yellow is lorcan and elid this one is the green is Rowan and Aelin. The blue, I think I just put it for sad moments. This one is like Aelin specific. So this this like more indigo purple. And then this purple, because it kind of reminded me of the color of the flame and shadow, whatever the newest book of Crescent City is. That is like where we're seeing like kind of Easter eggs to what's going on in like the other series, which is really exciting. And I know that like there's one big Easter egg that I've been like spoiled throughout the series. And I really think like if you have not read this book in a long time, maybe you read the series when it came out, go ahead and do a reread before Crescent City. 3 comes out if like obviously like if you finish everything and like you this is like the last one you've read because there's just so many like easter eggs um i like really want to reread akatar since like i read that without the prior knowledge of the other three so i want to see if i see the easter eggs in that one that show me like hey there's more to this that meets the eye then another thing that has been like oh my god like like i have him like which means like i have him hanging from my soul which is adian adian's like really struggling and like lysandra like i feel so bad for them they're like not having a good time and i guess like i understand why people don't like adian because before i didn't understand why that much but i i get it i'm not saying like what he did in this book is justified let me put this on like i'm not saying what he did was justified because i think like it was from a place of fear and he took out like this like anger that he had on her and also just like this like overall feeling of like he was failing in all fronts on lysandra but like i really want him to have his win like i really want him to like pull through you know like he's not like an immortal warrior with fucking powers that can defeat this all by himself like he's one man he's one man and also like elid and lorcan like i really like them like i feel like i don't know i just feel for them i feel for them so much like this book has me stressed with a capital s stressed very stressed and i'm not going anywhere by the way i'm not reading until the end of the day because like i know myself i can't pick this back up until i'm ready to finish it because that's what's gonna happen tonight but i don't know this feels like a book that i'm gonna finish and like reread once more and like it's crazy it took me 10 years to get through this book and now i'm like i need to finish it tonight but um obviously like as you can kind of hear i'm a little bit sick still so like it's not the vibe to be staying up all night especially since i ended up waking up at 7 30 today i don't know this book like really has inspired me to like write i was really nervous going into this book because i was like there's no way with all of the turns and like whirlwinds that we've taken like it's gonna close everything's gonna click so well but so far it has and i'm excited i'm excited to see what happens let me take this off and then i'll be right back side note i treated myself for my birthday and this lipstick makes me feel like alien galathinius because like i also my tourist queen love expensive things <laughs> and i got this like really cute lipstick lip balm that's been very viral because i think sophia richie wore it on her 
a wedding and I was like, you know, like if anyone would wear luxury makeup, it would be Elin Galathinius. Is that the right way to say that? I don't know. In case you're curious, the color is 15. It says here showcasing nude. So yeah, it's super pretty. I, I'm obsessed. Let me just powder it up because I have been like a teary, like coughing mess and I don't want everything to come out and this is also something that I treated myself to um I got gift cards for my birthday <laughs> I got the airbrush finishing powder also like tell me Aileen wouldn't be a Charlotte Tilbury gal like she'd either be a Chanel gal or a Charlotte Tilbury gal she'd be a luxury makeup gal she'd be work like using La Mer and stuff like that like like of course of course our iconic queen would be using really expensive um products i don't know why though because she, like you know she's gonna settle but yeah which also makes me sad because they've like suffered so much and for them to like come back into this universe <coughs> I'll update when I like when I start reading this again page 542 I did not expect to get this far I don't regret waiting so long to read this but like I am just happy that I'm here you know like I feel like I waited the exact right time to read this and like enjoy it and not be stressed that I have other things to do so see you later so I'm on chapter 75, page 643. It kind of took me like the week to pick this back up again because I ended up picking up Star Wars stuff. But I'm very intrigued with what's going on with Dorian because I really didn't expect this whole like, you know, Dorian and mate thing. And also like every time I read an Adian chapter, I'm like in tears. Like that is so sad. I'm literally like in tears, like Adian <laughs> and like, the crew in Darison have had such a really, like, such a hard time throughout this entire book. Like, it's been, like, rough. Like, he just, like, and, like, Manon getting there. Like, honestly, like, I didn't record it because I was listening to my audiobook while I was driving. But when, like, the Crokin, um, witches, like, all reassembled and, like, they, like, left their lives and, like, answered the call and then them getting to Darison and the 13th arriving and, like, I'm just, like, I'm not okay. I am not okay, okay. <laughs> oh my god. I have to keep reading. I have to keep reading. <laughs> this is so good. Like, oh my god. I'm like actually crying. <sighs> Let's continue. Like now I'm on chapter 89 reading it from Manon's POV and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I look crazy, but I'm gonna continue. This battle is actually going to annihilate me. If they, like I know like at the end, like they're gonna win, <laughs> but like at what cost? At what cost are we gonna get this win? I literally now have like a box of tissues with me because like I know, like I have had this series in my heart for the past 10 years and now I'm letting it go and like that's like so much. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is like why I didn't want to read it. I knew I would get like, I'm gonna have like the biggest gaping hole in my chest after this. No. No. Not. No. No. <laughs> if something's happening to Abraxas, I will actually riot. Riot. No. I'm about to set like an altar for Petra Blue Blood. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I don't know like why. Like I'm just like the most invested in the witches. Like they are my favorite. Oh my god. <sighs> Let's finish this. No. <laughs> I can't deal with what's about to occur. Like, it's like watching a train wreck. I am skinkered up and ready to talk about something that literally made me shut the book and pause. I just like literally had the burning rage of embers 
that Aelin now lacks inside of me. So what I'm talking about is I am on page 771. Oh no, now I'm on page 804, a uh, chapter 100. So I'm very much like on the precipice of finishing this book since I think it has around 970 pages around there. However, the fact that she just had to give up her powers to save the world and Dorian did nothing. We're getting this again? What? Like, why is this a thing? Why does this keep coming up in Sarah J. Mass's books? Like, honestly, like, I think, like, it, I feel like I understand now why people were so mad about Court of Silver Flames because I didn't know this. Like, I didn't know that that Aelin gives up her powers in order to, like, forge the lock. Excuse me? And, like, she gave up, like, everything? Like, what? Like, I honestly would have thought that, like, Dorian should have done it. Like, high key. That's it. Like, I know it's Aelin's book. She's on the cover. Like, but, like, nothing. I just don't understand like and then like ugh, ugh, it just like made me so angry and like i couldn't even enjoy the fact that like we know we saw like reese in like the when she's falling through the world and reese and a pregnant favorite he uses this power that like and like swooshes her back into her world if that makes sense because she asked for help and i wonder like does that come out in any of the books or is that like something that like basically takes place like during a court of silver flames that doesn't come out excuse me this really left a sour taste in my mouth and made me upset about the book and like the whole thing like it was not what i was hoping for like i think like yes she was overpowered but for her to give away like even her like fayness and also like i don't really understand like how she was just like this ghost this ghost that put this on her like i'm not that forgiving like how she was like elena can say and let air one in our world you're putting a lot of faith like you just did this huge sacrifice in order to lock the guy up and you're like oh jk i'm gonna keep him i'm gonna keep him I'm gonna try to deal with it and I was like what and I get it like obviously like she's the main character this has like an HGA at the end like like I know intrinsically that like they're gonna defeat him even like it's gonna be like an intense battle scene and whatever but like I did not like that at all and I think this really like knocked the book down for me I think that like as it was going I would have probably given it a five-star rating right now I'm just like what is the necessity why is this a trope that she keeps using also like part of the reason why that it's taken me so long to read this series is that i got really tired over and over again like how aelin does this thing of kind of like making all these plans off page even though she's the main character and then like later on being like surprise bitch like this was the whole plan and i'm like What's the point of you being the main character? It was the same thing that happened to me with Crescent City 2. Bryce said the same exact thing and I was like, in Crescent City 1 it happens too, but like, I was just like, I don't need this. I don't need this. I've gone on around like five minutes on this. Yeah, now I'm like, just like least, like I think I'll probably finish this like tomorrow when I've like had more energy to finish it and i think like i'm probably just gonna like audiobook it like i just cannot at this point with this book it made me so pissed <laughs> like i'm just like not excited to pick it up anymore oh my god you can see how glassy my eyes are but i'm like literally listening to this book as i work out because like i took a couple of days to like get over my pissed offness about aelin losing her powers the whole like Darrow, Evangeline situation. Lysandra Adian, like very heartfelt. Very heartfelt if you ask me. Honestly, I feel like Adian gets a lot of hate, but like he has like the worst luck in this. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. The guy suffers. He suffers. And I feel like I see way too many people saying they don't like him. I did it. I finished Kingdom of Ash. I'm feeling a lot of things right now. I didn't record myself finishing it because I didn't need that. Like I wanted to just focus on reading this and I knew if I recorded, I'd be paying too much attention to like recording rather than like and getting my reactions rather than just like enjoying it genuinely. But I will give my thoughts on the book tomorrow after I've collected them a bit. But wow, I feel like, I feel a lot. Just so overwhelmed with emotion. Honestly, it's like ending a relationship. It's sad. It's over. It's over and done with. I have finished the Sarah J. Mass universe with the completion of this book. It's been two days, or like one day and a half since I finished 
this book and I really wanted to gather my thoughts because even though I do recommend the series and I did enjoy my reading of it, it is a long series and it's very easy to get fed up with some of the conventions that Sarah J Maas uses over and over again because it's just like a lot. And I feel like I was quite disappointed with some of the things that happened in this book. In terms of just choices that were made that were not choices that I think that like it shouldn't be a trope the cho choices in particular I'm talking about Aelin losing her powers and I understand why it was done I understand how like she is fireheart blah 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 like she had to give something but I just felt like her like not banishing Erewhon or like Elena not having any consequences for her actions really left me like with a sour taste in my mouth because at the end of the day like Elena did do something she should not have done okay she gave like all her problems to um, the people in this generation right so like I felt like she got out of this scot-free I like hated that Gabrielle died I didn't think it was necessary but I guess like out of all I think like one of the cadre had to die and he was the only one that like could die because he didn't have like a mate or anything or like his mate died a while ago. Overall, I give the series a five star. I feel like it is very much twinged with the sort of nostalgia I have for it, with the love I have for the characters. I think that's what Sarah J Maas does the best. Like the love she can create and like the empathy you get from loving her characters is just a lot. I really hope that there's more to this, but the only way that like the only part I really see like a continuation would be with Fenris. So I don't know. I feel like Fenris would be like the one if I saw anyone in the next series, it would be Fenris. But also they say that like, you know, some characters are from the same line as like Aelin in the Crescent City novels and all that sort of thing. So I'm excited to finally get there. I really want to reread Akatar because I know that there are some Easter Easter eggs throughout that book series that are like with this one especially with the word marks they say the word marks come out also like I really want to reread Crescent City I don't see myself rereading this anytime soon maybe like in a couple of years when like Crescent City 4 comes out I'm like okay it's time to reread it overall I would say like this book for me it would probably be like a four star read but the series as a whole was like a five star and also like I don't know something that I enjoyed so much and like I spent so much time for like it has to be a five star even if it wasn't my cup of tea it has to be a five star so yeah take with that what you will I hope you enjoyed this if you have read Kingdom of Ash let me know if you enjoyed it let me know if you agree with the, some of the things I said in this vlog if you had the same emotional reactions or am I just crazy <laughs> I already like went through all the footage by the time I'm filming this and I was like, oh my god, I'm unhinged. Let me know if you were unhinged and I'll see you in the next one. I really like want to do another series where I vlog each book. So if you have any ideas of what that could be, let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye.